The FDA just issued a no objection letter with regards to Brazine, a protein roughly 500 to 2000 times sweeter than sugar with zero calories and apparently no blood sugar impact. What's also so exciting about this is that it doesn't come with that weird aftertaste that other artificial sweeteners produce. Two years ago, most sugar substitutes fell into simple categories, artificial chemicals or basic plant extracts. Now, precision fermentation and rare sugar isolation have created entirely new classes of sweeteners that function differently in the body. Cleveland Clinic researchers found erythritol, previously considered one of the safest options, increases blood concentration 1,000-fold after consumption potentially raising thrombrosis risks. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization clarified their position on non-sugar sweeteners, saying that they do not confer any long-term benefit on reducing body fat, despite decades of marketing claims to the contrary. The question isn't just which sweeteners are safe, it's which ones actually help manage blood sugar without creating new health problems. Natural sweeteners dominate the market. Natural sweeteners now control nearly 57% of the global sugar substitute market, with stevia, monk fruit, and erythritol leading the way. It's important to note that not all natural sweeteners are created equal. Monk fruit extract contains compounds called mongrosides that are 250 times sweeter than sugar but don't affect insulin, making it so valuable for keeping your glucose levels under control. What's your experience with natural sweeteners? Have you noticed differences in how your body responds to different types? Please let us know in the comments. And while natural options expand, the science behind them gets more specific, especially when it comes to their effects on your gut bacteria. The most shocking discovery of 2025 comes from microbiome research. This is really important because the artificial sweetener that you use makes a significant impact on the 100 trillion bacteria in your gut that help regulate your metabolism, immune system, and even your mood. Synthetic sweeteners like sucralose and saccharin actually reduce your gut bacterial diversity, whereas natural options like stevia's ribudioside A and xylitol actually preserve or enhance it. When researchers tracked participants consuming sucralose daily for 10 weeks, they discovered concerning changes in gut bacteria. They found a 300% increase in Bladia cacodylis bacteria and a decrease in beneficial lactobacillus acidophilus. These bacterial imbalances were linked to problematic changes in how the body processed sugar and responded to insulin, suggesting sucralose may negatively affect blood sugar control over time. Also, when another group of researchers tracked participants consuming sucralose daily, they found enriched levels of Enterobacteriaceae, bacteria linked to intestinal inflammation, and decreased butyrate-producing Lactobacillus, which helped maintain gut barrier function. And these changes appeared within just two weeks. If you're diabetic, this connection is even more critical as gut dysbiosis correlates with insulin resistance and glucose control problems. Xylitol also stands out as particularly useful because it promotes the growth of bifidobacteria strain, which are associated with improved metabolic health. However, it can cause your stomach pain due to digestive discomfort if you consume it in large amounts. If you've ever noticed digestive changes after switching sweeteners, this might explain why. And while gut health matters, the direct effects on blood sugar control stay primarily the concern for most diabetics, which brings us to the next breakthrough. D-allulose might be the most promising development for diabetes management. 
Unlike most sweeteners that simply avoid raising glucose, clinical trials show D-allulose actively suppresses postprandial glucose spikes by 11 to 12 milligrams per deciliter and reduces insulin excursions. This rare sugar occurs naturally in small amounts in wheat, figs, and raisins. What makes it new is how it's metabolized. Your body absorbs it, but doesn't convert it to glucose. Instead, it appears to enhance insulin sensitivity in non-diabetic people and may help prevent pre-diabetes progression. The FDA now allows manufacturers to count D-allulose at just 0.4 calories per gram versus 4 calories for sugar, and it's exempt from added sugars labeling. This regulatory change has sparked a surge in D-allulose sweetened products targeting the diabetes market. You can use D-allulose in cooking and baking with results nearly identical to sugar without the glucose spike. It browns, caramelizes, and provides bulk-like sugar, something most other substitutes can't match. But while D-allulose shows promise, another popular sweetener has come under serious scrutiny for cardiovascular risks. The most startling reversal in sweetener safety involves erythritol. Previously, this was considered among the safest options for diabetics. However, new research from the Cleveland Clinic found that consuming erythritol leads to blood concentrations 1,000 times higher than normal baseline levels. This matters because people with diabetes already face elevated cardiovascular risks. Erythritol occurs naturally in fruits and fermented foods at very low levels, but the concentrated amounts in sugar-free products create blood levels never seen in natural consumption. The study tracked 4,000 people in the US and Europe, finding those with the highest blood erythritol levels had twice the risk of heart attack, stroke, and death. The effect was dose-dependent. The more erythritol consumed, the higher the risk. This just highlights how important it is that you check your food ingredient labels carefully. Erythritol is often the first ingredient in stevia blends and monk fruit sweeteners because it provides bulk. However, you may prefer pure extracts without erythritol, despite their most intense sweetness. For cooking, I recommend using smaller amounts of pure monk fruit extract or stevia gliosides rather than cup-for-cup -cup replacement blends containing erythritol. Has this research changed how you view natural sugar alcohols like erythritol? Let me know in the comments. What we've seen in 2025 so far is that while some sweeteners raise new concerns, regulatory changes are creating opportunities for entirely new categories. The FDA's approval of Brazine in April 2025 marks the beginning of the sweet protein era. If you haven't heard of sweet proteins yet, you will soon. Because unlike traditional sweeteners that bind to sweet taste receptors differently than sugar, creating an unpleasant aftertaste, Sweet proteins activate the same receptor pathways as sugar. That's why they taste way better. This protein is roughly 500 to 200 times sweeter than sugar and is produced through precision fermentation. Brazine is particularly stable at high temperatures and across various pH levels, making it suitable for baking and cooking. Another sweet protein gaining traction is thaumatin, which is derived from the kentemp fruit. It's finding applications in dairy products and baked goods as a flavor enhancer that masks bitterness. Monolin, extracted from the serendipity berry, is another promising sweet protein that's approximately 3,000 times sweeter than sugar and offers a clean, lingering sweetness without the bitter aftertaste of artificial sweeteners. Research shows monolin also has anti-inflammatory properties. For diabetics, these new sweet proteins don't affect blood glucose, insulin, or gut bacteria, yet they still deliver a delicious sweet taste. 
At the same time, they avoid the downsides of both artificial sweeteners and sugar alcohols. Products using Brazine are expected to reach shelves by late 2025, starting with sugar-free chocolates and confectionery. Are you excited to try foods sweetened with proteins instead of traditional sweeteners? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But with all these options, what do health authorities actually recommend? What comes next might surprise you. The World Health Organization's Updated Stance in 2025, the World Health Organization caused a stir when it recommended against using non-sugar sweeteners to control weight, citing long-term studies that showed higher risks of obesity and BMI. The stands in stark contrast to the marketing of the industry for decades. Their guidelines specifically state that substitutes should be used to reduce added sugar consumption while transitioning toward naturally sweet foods like fruit. So make sure to use sweeteners strategically rather than habitually. The ADA suggests viewing them as tools for specific situations, like managing occasional cravings rather than daily dietary staples. For optimal health, experts now also recommend diversifying the sweeteners you choose to use rather than relying on a single option. This approach minimizes potential risks for you from any one sweetener. And while those guidelines provide you with some good general advice, what you really need to do is create your own personalized approach based on how you respond to different sweeteners. Everybody responds differently to each sweetener. Factors like genetics, your gut microbiome composition, and metabolic health create a unique sweetener fingerprint for each person. Earlier this year, in a study tracking continuous glucose watches in 500 participants, they found that while most people showed minimal glucose response to stevia, about 15% experienced modest increases in their blood sugar levels. This is likely because of indirect effects on their gut hormone signaling. Variations like this appeared with all sweeteners tested. So if you're diabetic, you do need to try using continuous glucose watches or do some form of regular testing, trying any new sweeteners to identify your personal response patterns. After all, what works for others may not work for you. Some diabetic clinics now offer sweetener response testing as part of a comprehensive management program. These tests analyze microbiome composition, genetic factors, and glucose responses to forecast which sweeteners will work best for each person. Have you noticed that certain sweeteners affect you differently than they seem to affect others? Let us know in the comments. But beyond blood sugar, the long-term metabolic effects of different sweeteners does raise important questions about how they affect weight management. There's a concerning paradox when it comes to artificial sweeteners and their effects on weight loss. Despite containing zero calories, many sweeteners may actually promote late weight gain through several mechanisms. First, artificial sweeteners appear to alter brain reward pathways, potentially increasing cravings for sweet foods. Second, some sweeteners disrupt gut hormones that regulate hunger and satiety. Third, the microbiome changes mentioned earlier may promote increased calorie extraction from other foods. In 2015, the San Antonio Heart Study reported their findings from the drinking habits of 3,682 middle-aged adults over 7 to 8 years. They found that those who drank more than 21 diet drinks per week were twice as likely to become overweight or obese compared to those who didn't drink diet soft drinks. Also, in another study that followed 10,000 adults over a five-year period, the researchers found that daily artificial sweetener consumers gained on average 2.7 more pounds than non-consumers, even when controlled for other dietary factors. They found that the effect was strongest with saccharin and sucralose, while natural sweeteners like monk fruit showed the least association with weight gain in the studies. So don't rely on artificial sweeteners for fat loss tools. 
Instead, use them strategically while focusing on eating more natural, organic, whole foods. Improve your protein intake and make sure that you are always getting enough fiber in your diet. So what is the optimal approach for incorporating artificial sweeteners into your diet? Here's my six step framework for getting the best benefits from artificial sweeteners. First, prioritize natural sweeteners with proven safety profiles. Monk fruit extract, pure stevia glycosides, and D-allulose top the list based on current evidence. And keep an eye out for the revolutionary sweet proteins like brisine and thaumatin that are just entering the market as they provide sugar-like taste without the metabolic downsides. Second, rotate between several options rather than using the same sweetener daily. This minimizes any potential risks you may face from overexposure to any single compound while providing you with the benefits of reduced sugar intake. Sweet proteins like prasine can be part of this rotation, especially for baking and cooking. Third, use sweeteners mostly in homemade foods where you control the amount rather than in processed products that often contain excessive amounts. A quarter teaspoon of monk fruit extract can sweeten an entire recipe without the additives found in commercial products. Once sweet protein products hit shelves later this year, look for ones with minimal additional ingredients. Fourth, watch your personal response. Track blood glucose, digestive systems, cravings, and weight when trying new sweeteners, including the upcoming sweet protein products. Your individual response matters more than general recommendations, and these new protein sweeteners might be game changers for those who respond poorly to traditional options. Fifth, consider the specialized benefits of different sweeteners. D-allulose actively helps manage glucose spikes, while sweet proteins like brazine offer the most sugar-like taste experience without the aftertaste of other alternatives. Match the sweetener to your specific needs, cooking, baking, beverages, or straight consumption. Finally, work toward reducing your overall preference for sweetness by gradually decreasing sweetener amounts in foods and beverages. This long-term strategy helps reset your taste expectations while maintaining your blood sugar control. The most successful diabetes management approaches view sweeteners as tools in a larger strategy rather than solutions in themselves. And with sweet proteins entering the market, your toolbox just got significantly better. So let me know what you think of these sweetener strategies in the comments. Have you tried any of the newer options like D-allulose? Are you excited about sweet proteins like Brazine coming to the market? I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's the current state of sugar substitutes for balancing blood sugar in 2025. If you found this information helpful, please consider subscribing to Diabetes Smarts for more evidence-based updates on managing blood sugar naturally. And if you're looking for more immediate ways to lower your glucose levels, check out my video, Lower Blood Sugar with These Bedtime Drinks. It reveals seven powerful drinks that can help stabilize your numbers overnight, improve insulin sensitivity, and even enhance your sleep quality. I'll put the link right here on the screen and in the description below. See you in the next video.